Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13. This is the continuation of the Dreams and Visions series. Uh, I know it's a lot of uh, background, and but I'm trying to lay a foundation because when we get to the New Testament, you'll totally understand. So this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, in other words, a uh, you know, a sign or a wonder, you know, a miracle, basically. And the sign of or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken, in other words, you don't listen, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you, proveth you, to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. In other words, you're going to be tested. Verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Wow. Chaplain Bob, that's not very that's not very loving. We serve a God of love. He just loves everybody. Uh no. No. You know what you're supposed to do with Satanists and what have you? There you go. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you. Uh, Bob's note here. They're talking about the gods of the Canaanites here. Namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt, neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely kill him. But, but that doesn't sound like a God of love. Well, you know, you know what happens when you tolerate evil? Uh, Satanists come to power and they get into positions of power. And then your children start disappearing. And they get sacrificed on an altar to Satan. The three big times of the year are obviously Halloween, which is coming up being this is uh, October 18, 2020. Another big time they disappear and get sacrificed is uh, around Easter. And another time is what they call Christmas. Take a look at it. Uh, if you looked at the kidnapping statistics, you will find that about Last time I looked at it, about half of all the kidnappings occur weeks prior to those three, if you want to call them holidays, you can. 
but like two to three weeks before Easter, two to three weeks before Christmas, two to three weeks before Halloween, uh, that's say nine weeks, 50% of the children's kidnappings occur during that period. But, but Bob, we should, we should, we should preach the gospel to these people. God loves them. He wants them to be saved. Uh, well, you know what? You can argue the Lord when you meet him and tell him that Deuteronomy 13, you just don't like it. Tell him. Verse 9. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be the first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. Uh, this is your family members, people. You know, really. Do you love the Lord more than your family? In Matthew 10, 37, he sa Jesus says, Jesus says, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Boy. Verse 9, Deuteronomy 13. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. You know, 13 is a number, it's not a good number in the Bible. You will find that 13 and 9 are, and 11 are usually associated with, uh, usually associated with bad things. Uh, not always, though. Um, let's see. There, did you know that there was act technically 13 tribes in Israel? Yeah, because of um, uh, Joseph with Ephraim and Manasseh, they were split. Some people say that Dan was uh, cast off. I'm not convinced either way. But uh, if Dan was cast off, then there would be 12. With Ephraim and Manasseh, one of them taking the place. I'm not totally convinced. I've read this stuff, and I know the arguments for both ways. And, you know, that's why if I'm not 100% sure about something, I generally try to stay away from it. So, verse 10. And thou shalt stone him with stones. No, we're not talking about legal weed here. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear. Hear and fear. And ye shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. If thou shalt hear, if thou shalt hear, say in one of thy cities, which the Lord thy God hath given thee to dwell in, saying, Certain men, the children of Belial, uh, that's basically wickedness, the children of Belial are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known, then shalt thou inquire and make search and ask diligently, and behold, if it be true and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you, thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly. And all that is therein, and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. So if a city turns to Satanism, guess what the solution was? But but God, Bob, that was the Old Testament God. He uh, now we got Jesus. He's such a loving, you know. I don't think so, people. Jesus was such a loving God that he's going to. Uh, well, read the book of Revelation. Yeah, fire come out of his mouth. Why would you uh, slay the cattle with the edge of the sword? Because they've been um, 
dedicated to Satanism. That's why. Verse 16. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof, and shalt burn with fire the city, and all the spoil thereof, every whit. For the Lord thy God, and it shall be a heap forever, it shall not be built again. Verse 17, And there shall cleave not of the cursed thing to thine hand, that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger, and show thee mercy, and have compassion upon thee, and multiply thee, as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, when thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep all his commandments which I command thee, thee this day to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. Yeah. All right, well, this is the uh, end of Deuteronomy 13. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.